that 73% of KwaZulu-Natal is in black hands, over 50% in the Eastern Cape is in black hands, a beautiful, perfect, arable land. Why is it not producing food and jobs? It's not true. The policies have been wrong. Land ownership, particularly agricultural and arable land in South Africa, is still majority owned by white males. On land, in 1996, government developed a green paper. It was a policy document of government to express what should be done with the land question. And they had made a commitment then that within the first five years, they should have redistributed 80% of agricultural land in South Africa. And guess what was the number at the end of 1999? It was 1% 1 of the targeted 80%. Now it's to 2030. Not even that 30% has been achieved. The top 1% in South Africa is richer than 26 million people. Mm -hmm. Not even the 12 1%. Three human beings. Yeah. Three families. Yeah, yeah. three families mm -hmm. are richer than 26 million human beings in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a myth which is said in many sectors of society that from 1994, the policies that have been given by the political leadership are correct. It's just implementation that mm. is wrong. It's not true. The policies have been wrong mm. fundamentally from 1994 as to what happens. And how do you see this? You see that on the roles which the executive should provide policy guidance on, on the economy, mm. which fundamentally is and primarily is what government should focus on, where you expand the productive forces, you develop the economy so that the base upon which you collect taxes, the money which you utilize for public service is bigger. The South African government has dismally failed from 1994 onwards. And of course, even apartheid was doing that for their own purposes uh, in terms of what got to happen. But in terms of economic direction and policy direction that has happened thus far, the economy in South Africa has never grown upward of 1.2% average from 1994 this way. Actually, in the past 12 years, it has been average of 0.8%, meaning that it's no growth because once you start with a zero to, mm. to account for economic expansion, you must know that the, uh, there isn't anything that has been provided. But also the role of government and the state is to provide safety and security from internal strife, but also from external threats. All indications, by the way, illustrate that there has not been any meaningful <laughs> protection of our people particularly in terms of that, just how the levels of crime, particularly murder, has got to increase in South Africa, where you have upward of 27,000 people who are killed on an annual basis. Uh, that, that is the crisis that we're faced with. But also the other function is to then provide and maintain mega infrastructure. Actually, all the infrastructure must be provided and maintained by the state. But if you were to check the state of South Africa's infrastructure now, you realize that... Um, there is uh, nothing meaningful that has got to uh, be done much more meaningfully. So the manifesto of the EFF articulates as to just how are we going to provide much more sound and solid economic policy direction, which is going to expand the economy, how are going to provide safety and security for people, how are going to provide primary uh, public services, healthcare, education, mm -hmm. and social protection as well in a much more coherent and clear way that is going to realize, realize a collective development. And that is basically the foundation of just where we come from. There is a section, I think, this question obviously leads us to, to that section about the current conditions in which these proposals about how to fix South Africa are made. Yes. Can you take us through uh, what are the major highlights of that section, the current conditions in South Africa? Look, the... There are certain areas which we have to highlight in terms of what defines South Africa today. And then, of course, that must be consistent with what we say is the theme of the EFF election manifesto, our land, jobs, and stop load shedding now. That is, that is the main emphasis. On land, you know, the, in 1996, the government developed a green paper and then it became a white paper in 1997 meaning that it was a policy document of government to, to express what should be done with the land question. Mm -hmm. And they had made a commitment then that within the first five years, they should have redistributed 80% of agricultural land in South Africa. And guess what was the number at the end of 1999? In March 1999, it was 1% 1 
of the targeted 80%. And then they shifted the goalpost to 2004 to say that now, now because it was still the process of changing the legislation and trying to constitute a democratic government, we are unable to take the land back. Mm. And then they shifted the goalposts to 2004. Still, there was no achievement of that. Shifted to 2009, still no achievement. 2014, now it's to 2030. Not even that 30% has been achieved in terms of land redistribution, particularly agricultural land in South Africa. So the land ownership, particularly ag ag agricultural and arable land in South Africa is still majority owned by white minorities, by, by white males. It's upward of 80%. So many people they say that number is incorrect. It's the most correct number that um, gets to define. And actually, the, part of the ways to could gauge that is just to, at a smaller scale, just go and check the Johannesburg Fresh, fresh Produce Market, which has got an annual turnover of about 8 billion rands, like where they buy agricultural products from farmers and then small-scale traders of bananas, of potatoes, of tomatoes, of carrots, and everything else they take from there, including the major retail stores like Spa, Pig and Pay, ShopRite, they buy from the fresh produce market to sell to our people. If you go to the fresh produce market and check who are the people who are supplying them with fresh produce, mm. it's more than 90% white farmers. Mm. And that is the reflection of a failed land reform program uh, that got to not give land to our people mm. in the in the in the in the in the in the period since 1994. So there's there's been dismal failure. It's 30 years now since the first uh, inclusive elections in South Africa, but it's still less than 10 percent of agricultural and arable land that has been given mm. to our people. And then that, that is one diagnostic that we can give in terms of. Uh, the land situation that this government has dismally failed to give land to our people and to empower our people to participate much more meaningfully in agriculture. The second issue that we must make diagnosis on is the levels of inequality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the post-1994 government outdid apartheid in terms of the levels of inequality. Yeah. Like the, we are the most unequal society in the world. More than, Not, we were under more than we were under apartheid. I mean, under apartheid, the dispossession and the poverty of black people was legislated. It was law which prevented people, black people, from owning the land, from owning certain business activities, from economically uplifting themselves. From and, even uh, applying for certain jobs. Yes, there from even job applying for certain jobs. Policies. Yes, there were job reservation policies. But... This post-1994 government outdid apartheid in terms of the levels of inequality, and the inequality are still racialized. Mm. Meaning that actually apartheid just got to be worsened under the so-called uh, democracy in South Africa. Like, so the, the economic apartheid is still a lived reality, and it's, it's, it's actually getting deeper and much more intense how do under you, a democratic how do you, project. Let me, let me just push you a little bit yeah. on that statement. Uh, I find uh, that it's the most unconvincing argument yeah. when people say what the, there's just no break between apartheid and and nineteen well post nineteen ninety four yes and even now you are saying economic apartheid is per, is, is persisting yeah but isn't it that we are leaving uh, like we're not taking the people who have been running the country, we're giving them a free pass. Yes. Because when you control the state, you control economic resources. Yes. The example in question is, and that budget, which is passed every February, of over a trillion rands now. It's been over a trillion rands yeah, for, for some time. time. Yeah, it has, it, it's almost it's in the trillion. hands yes. of a black government. Yes. That's an economic resource. Yes. Uh, but also it includes municipalities that generate revenue on their own. Yes. Uh, as well as state-owned companies, uh, institutions, economic institutions that have been in the hands of this government since... Uh, since 
1994. Actually, if the GDP of South Africa is 400, tr 4 trillion rands, yes. uh, about 2 trillion of that is in the hands of the state. No, look, the, so, the, so what, the what, what is what is when you say <laughs> so the measure, the, the measure, these people don't have economic yeah. power. So the measure, the measure of uh, economic benefits, it's what later absolutely accrues to the individual. Mm -hmm. What do the individuals get to gain afterwards? That is why even when you use this thing they call Gini coefficient of yes. measuring mm -hmm. the inequalities, they measure the assets and wealth that accrues to individuals. And mm -hmm. then they say that the top 1% in South Africa is richer than 26 million people. Mm -hmm. Not even the 12 1%. Three human beings. Yes. But three families. Yeah, yeah. three families mm -hmm. are richer than 26 million human beings in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the strategic sectors of the economy, mm -hmm. like the natural resources sector, in the retail chain stores, in the financial services sector, the control still reflects what apartheid was. There's mm -hmm. never been any significant shift since 1994. So that is what still obtains in South Africa and contributes significantly to the mm -hmm. inequality that is definitive of our situation. And then, of course, mm -hmm. it happens in a way that leads to joblessness. That is another diagnostic that mm -hmm. we have to deal with now, yes. Mm -hmm. There you have it guys. Our African leaders are really doing their best to show how much they've envisioned the future, a sustainable future for Africa and its inhabitants. But you know here in Kwazemi, we also love to hear from the people of Africa and lovers of Africa um, in the comments. So uh, we encourage you to watch the videos as we post them here on uh, Kwazemi and do not fail to share your comments in the comments where you express uh, your views, especially um, as people who love Africa and really wish the best for the future of Africa. So whatever it is you've heard and whatever it is you have a feeling about the speech you've just heard, please make sure to put it down in the comments. Thank you for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please share and like and subscribe because that's the way you support Kwasami as a channel, an Afrocentric channel, uh, where we try to understand um, deeper issues in African history and hopefully develop um, a collective intelligence on how we wish to build the Africa we want to see as people of Africa. See you in the next one.